Hey guys, it's Brett from Iron Body Martial Arts here. How's it going? I'm on a channel here on YouTube that focuses mainly on old style traditional martial arts and conditioning training, but all sorts of aspects of martial arts training, self defense, um, hardening the body, um, strength and conditioning. So I've been doing some live trainings. I try and do them over the days and like put them on here. Today I've been doing, uh, I did some others. I do conditioning, Shaolin Kung Fu, Iron Palm, Jiu Jitsu, all sorts of things that I go through. So today uh, I'm gonna show you guys um, uh, uh, a ground mount escape when someone's on top of you um, that, that could save your life in a self-defense situation or in like a, whatever situation you're in. And I, I actually used this escape myself in a real situation um, when someone when I tackled someone to the ground, but then they got on top of me and they got aggressive uh, and they basically said like, now you're gonna suffer, you know, now you're gonna pay. So we'll, um, yeah, we'll, we'll go into the escape and we'll just drill it a couple of times, it's really easy. Um, so first off, I've been training and I'm warmed up. Um, so, but also you'll see by this escape why it's important that as a martial artist, you have like flexibility, you have core strength, you know, you do your sit-ups, um, you do your sort of wrestling practice on your bag or grapple bag or whatever. Even if you don't, even if you're a martial artist who doesn't do ground work like Nawaza and stuff like that. Um, you might learn this in traditional jujitsu. I, I used to do traditional jujitsu where we, we learned this, but you also learn it in BJJ. And you should learn it in loads of martial arts. So let's go on to the ground escape. You'll have to forgive me for the cheap, um, the cheap production value here, but I've got my grapple bag. Um, no, I just call me GCS says, can I call you sensei? Just call me whatever you want, man. Just don't call me anything bad. <laughs> All right, so have a look at this escape. Let's have a look. All right, so. All right. So you'll have to, this is my grapple buddy here. So okay, how this escape starts is like what happened to me in real life. So I was on, I was on the job. I'm a policeman. Tackled someone down in the middle of the road, and we fell. Well, we fell like this. We fell because they were bigger than me. You can't always decide how you're going to fall. And we fell with the person on top. Yeah. So there's their arms. There's the person, and you fall with the person on top of you. Um, and then they say they're going to start raining hell down on you. Yeah. So thanks for the thumbs up, guys. Do like and subscribe. This is a terrible position. General conditioning counts here, and this is what I was saying, uh, I say a lot, is you squeeze with your legs, yeah? And this is a weak muscle area, but we can tell you how to train that. You squeeze with your legs, and then you go here, yeah? And you cross your legs, everyone knows this, yeah? And you squeeze, yeah, just a little, to gain the control of the hips and stuff, or the body. Um, now, on a tangent, um, this is a good exercise you can do with your grapple bag, just going left and right, left and right, as silly as it sounds, yeah, to build your core and build this hip uh, and leg power, yeah, for, for clamping and gripping and wrestling, yeah, so that, that's an exercise you can do, but we'll go on to that. So let's go through the scenario here. Person's on top of you, they're gonna start raining hell. So we're not even gonna make it as complicated um, as anything to do with raising your hips or anything like that. We're gonna make it super simple because this is what happened to me. I was in the middle of the road, yeah, and we fell onto the floor, yeah. So cars were coming uh, and you can't stay on the floor wrong. And I like, like a lot of people say in real self-defense situations, the floor is the absolute worst place to be. 100% agree, yeah. So land like this, grip with the legs and clamp, yeah. So what I did then is I pulled up, which is why you need a bit of core, and I went around the person like this, and just ripped them like this. So as you can see, the arms are trapped, yeah? So you trap the arms, and if you trap only one, that's fine, but you can get it, yeah? You can gouge the eyes, whatever, but this is a situation I had. I trapped the arms, I hugged the person, and now you think, oh, well, I'm stuck. But at least they can't rain blows down on you. But they may have a knife, they may have something, it might be starting to hurt you. So you can't give them a few seconds, yeah? You'd be hurting them in other ways, but this is a situation that happened to me. So I pulled them in, then you're like, shit, what can I do, all right? So we're not gonna piss around. All you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your opposite foot. 
So easy, yeah? But this is why you need a bit of flexibility and stuff. You grab your opposite foot, yeah? You now you might have to wiggle to get it. You know, the guy who fell on top of me was a big guy. He was about uh, at least 95, 100 kilos, 100 and something kilos compared to me. I'm like 85. So anyway, you're squeezing with your legs, you're gripping around, you're starting to restrict the, the air, then you grip the other foot, yeah? And then it's nice and simple now, because you grip the other foot, you just push them over like this. Yeah, you fall on that side, yeah? Four. Now one cool thing is, and we're not going too crazy with the BJJ, because this isn't so much BJJ, um, well it is, but it's, this is something like everyone should know, wrestling, whatever. The cool thing is here, you've got the arms trapped. Yeah, you have to grab your leg. You can come around to the face, if you imagine, and you can push and rake the face or whatever to help get them over. Yeah, and once they're over, yeah, then this is up for you, for your training, for your wrestling control, where you would grip, weight, belt. But what I did was hand for down, Controlled hands, body on, strength on, yeah, um, controlling the arms. And in my situation, because it's a real fight, uh, real martial arts, boom, 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 I used three headbutts in short succession. One, two, three, um, just like that, yeah, and then <coughs> elbow, okay? And then, thanks for the likes, guys, do like and sub. So that's the scenario. Um, that was a real scenario, um, and that's what happened to me. So I was chasing someone down. They'd been, um, they'd been attacking other people and throwing stuff and smashing windows. I chased them down into the middle of the road, a uh, bigger guy than me, and when he saw it was only me, he turned around and he was like, yeah, come on, give it a go. Yeah, we were in the middle of the road, so I couldn't fight the guy in the middle of the road, so I grabbed his collar, ran into the corner of the road, but boom, we fell over, yeah? So we trip over the curb, because you can't plan for everything in life. We trip over the curb, bang. The guy lands like this on top of me. The road's here, cars are coming. This is a, sorry to say, this is a fucked up situation. And this is the worst situation to be in. And I'm like, shit, this guy's heavier than me. And he says, he's like, he says something like, now it's gonna be a nightmare, or now it's on, or now the fight's on, or something like that. And I'm like, shit. This guy's gonna start raining blows down on me. I've got mere seconds here, yeah? I mean, I do have stuff that I can draw, but it's just not possible. So again, the scenario for you guys is grip with knees, clamp, pull up, and pull person to you. I managed to wrap the arms, so that was cool. So arms completely wrapped. Now there's cars coming by, yeah? So, so you don't wanna stay here for long, this is not cool. Yeah, this is real life, you know, like that's why this is the, the age old BJJ argument. This position sucks, but that's why I'm making this little video because this is the position you can be in, yeah? And all martial artists should be able to get out of this position, all right? Kung Fu, traditional Jiu Jitsu, Karate, whatever. Yeah, so you need to control. So arms controlled, grip tight. This is why you need basic strength. Pull in, yeah? Grip the mark brother. Bite the person, whatever you want to do, you be careful of bites yourself. So what I did in the situation, pulled in, gripped my leg, opposite leg, opposite hand, opposite leg, yeah? And then simple, you roll to that side. Yeah, obviously <laughs> I used adrenaline and push, because you're pushing off this leg, opposite side, yeah? Now I'll show you on the camera side so you can see. So gripping, pulling them in, squeezing them as tight as you can with your legs. Yeah, so you squeeze that oxygen out of them, you're distracting them, yeah? Opposite leg, opposite knee, yeah? And then you see how easy the roll is, yeah? See that? And the power you can push off, yeah? So you end up stupidly like this for a second, only for a second, break the face, push up. This is where your wrestling and your martial arts comes into play. Yeah, on top. Arm control, weight down, chest control, whatever it is that you do. But in my situation, yeah, I work my way up here, still squeezing with the legs, still pushing down with the weight, arms controlled, and one, two, three. Three headbutts at close range, yeah. 
So I've trained the top of my head through Kung Fu and Iron Head and shit. But even if you haven't, it doesn't matter, yeah? Not like this, yeah, because a person gonna move their head out of the way um, and you're gonna knock yourself out. It's like almost Lathway style or whatever real style headbutts that are just one, two, three, almost a few centimeters from the head just to distract it. One, two, three, the elbow, yeah? And the elbow is what, is what stunned the person, yeah? Bum, there it goes, deal with them, right? So that was, that was the chain of events. Okay, so we'll run, uh, and I know floor and grapple stuff can be boring for everyone, um, but there's a few there's a few training points there to, that you can use with your grapple dummy or your or whatever. Keep your core trained. Do your press ups. Do your sit ups. If you've got a bag like this, a boxing bag, just practice being on the floor, and gripping it with your knees. Yeah. Gripping around it, pulling it in, doing sit-ups with the bag, yeah? Grabbing your opposite foot, pushing left, pushing right. Um, and then obviously from the top, you can practice pinning, um, moving, yeah? But always keeping the weight on the bag. Um, and it's pretty cool for, um, uh, huh, who's that? Crook the ghost, keep up the work, man. So. Thanks bro. So it's pretty cool for, like you know, Americans and stuff like that. You guys have a pretty cool wrestling culture. But there's other martial arts in places in the world, other places in the world where there's not so much of a wrestling culture. People aren't taught to wrestle or, you know, in Kung Fu. In Kung Fu there's a whole subsection of wrestling, um, but it's, it's, it's like little practiced. It's a specific Kung Fu itself, but it should be part of the main thing yeah so um so yeah anyway let's see what comments we have from anyone ninja squid says the basics are the best grook the ghost says keep up the work yeah now what i'm you know what i'm trying to say in this channel this channel isn't like oh, shit. this channel isn't a bjj specific or wrestling specific or whatever but um, you know I always pick topics of martial arts to explore um, and work on so you got to work on these things work on your weaknesses sometimes it's grip strength sometimes it's um, endurance training etc etc so okay I'll get rid of the sledgehammer oh and don't worry about the white belt like, that's just actually to keep my kidneys warm that's a um, that's a kung fu thing. All right, so let's try again. Simple and easy. So even if you don't have a grapple dummy, go through this in your head. So we'll go through it one more time. Easy stuff. But then what? What's good to do? I know it's so simple, but inside the exercise, look for all the different training places where you might get caught up. All right. So you might get caught up. You might get caught up on your back because your abdomen muscles aren't that strong. So make sure you practice um, the sit-ups. But anyway, one more time for the demonstration. Quick, down, squeeze, clamp, lift up, pull. Try and wrap the arms from above like this. Yeah. Person pulled in. Opposite hand, opposite leg. You can practice this from here. Then push off and onto stuck. Yeah? And go back. Wrap. Wrap. Opposite hand, opposite hand. Push off and onto stomach. Yeah, it might not be pretty. Yeah, and control. And control with weight. Control. Keep the head in. Yep. Here we go. So, one more time. You land down. Blows could be raining from above. Knees squeezed. Grip. Come in from above. You can distract the face and wrap the person and squeeze them in. Opposite hand, opposite leg. Push up. Yeah. And you've got them pinned. Yeah. Real life situation. Like what happened to me. Pin. Control arms. One, two, three. Little head buffs. Elbow. And then 
they're not having a good day. Ah, and there we go. So please guys, give that little combination a go, uh, like we just demonstrated there. Um, you're on your back, you grip them, you pull them in, yeah, by wrapping the arms first, on your back, grip them, pull them in, wrap the arms, opposite hand, opposite leg, push them up, off you, small head butts, elbow, and away, where you go, yeah, or you can just keep them controlled there. I see one person's another new joined in, so I'll show it one more time, so important, shitty situation to be in, this is not the situation to be in, this is what happened to me, fell over, person on top, but you may encounter this in like a jiu-jitsu or whatever, person on top, wrap from above, grip, legs, grip, they can't do anything for now, opposite hand, opposite leg, and then push off in the opposite direction, push off, hip, controlled, arm control at the, at the shoulders, down, weight on, and in, in this situation, I did two, three headbutts, then pinned the arm, one big elbow, and the person was stunned, and I was able to gain control. All right, so, so that's the, the little escape. Such an easy escape to do. Have a look at some of the comments. And I'm no BJJ master. Lucille Silva says, good night. Good night, sir. So look, I'm no crazy BJJ wrestling person, but there are lots, and me a couple of years ago included, but there are lots of martial artists, whatever out there, who don't know this escape. Um, I used it um, in real life. Someone had, I chased someone down. They'd been attacking people. They'd been smashing stuff up. And the only reason I repeat it is because it's a live feed. People keep joining in. Um, found them in the middle of the road. They, they wanted to fight. Um, we, we ended up wrestling, fell over. The person landed on top of me and they were like, right, now it's gonna get serious or they made some, you know, now you're gonna die or now this or whatever they said. Um, but there's cars coming by and it's like, this is stupid. So that's the thing. Get them in, wrap them up, pull them in. Yeah, they can't do anything. Um, there's obviously lots you can do from here. Opposite hand to opposite leg. And that's why just general core conditioning is important and flexibility. Opposite hand to opposite leg, yeah? And then flip them over on the same side as the, as the leg. Because if you imagine you've lifted one leg up, you've lifted one leg up. So I'll demonstrate it one more time. It's so easy, but please practice it. Use your boxing bag, fallen over. This is crap. Punches can rain down. Before you even do any hip tilts or anything like that, um, you know, to keep your hip off the ground. It's just, oh shit, they're on me. Legs, so I did a big wrap like this to get the arms. Legs and arms wrapped. Person's on top of you, fat bastard. Can't do anything. Uh, pull them in. Head was up here. And it's like, shit, what do I do now? Opposite hand to opposite leg. Yeah. Opposite hand, opposite leg. Push. And it's so easy to come over. Yeah. When they come over, you keep that, you keep that weight and pressure on them. Yeah, you keep their arms pinned. I kept my head very close to their face, wrestling style. One, two, head butts with the top of the head here because that's the area I've trained in Kung Fu. Yeah, short ones as well. Because if you do big ones, they move their head and you knock yourself out, all right? Don't do that. <laughs> Luckily, I had peace of mind, control in my mind enough to think I just need to affect the person. One, two, this is my body weapon, the other one's a pin. One, two, three, big elbow. And then they were stunned, all right? So, there we go. So let's have a look at some of the comments. So hopefully you guys see that now. What an easy escape. Um, some training points within that, I'll have a look at the comments. But some training points within that is <laughs> he got judified, said Ninja Squid. Um, good night. Lucio says, I had to escape from the ground situation in real life in the past. One guy caught me on a single leg then tried to climb over me. I placed one foot on his head and pushed. 
are doing Ushiro Nagi to stand up. Awesome, awesome job. See, so so many cool ways, um, so many cool things. I was caught off guard by this because a person landed on top of me. But it was so good because it was like, you know, because look, I'm, I'm one of those sort of self-defense, martial arts, kung fu, traditional jiu-jitsu, karate people, um, you know, a bit, bit of wrestling, bit of MMA, bit of, but I'm one of those people who's like, and from policing, it's like the ground is the worst place unless you're on top. Yeah, the ground is just no, you don't want to do any of that in, like, in real life. And in this situation, in the street with cars going by. But inadvertently, I fell over onto my back, you know, because you can't always be in the winning position at every moment in real life. That's just the fact. Um, and this just came in great, yeah. So there we go for people, for any kind of, for any like BJJ haters out there or wrestling haters or whatever, this, that is a reason to practice Go and do BJJ, go and do your wrestling. Um, this isn't a BJJ wrestling channel, but it's all martial art channel, because I think all martial arts have value. So go and do those things. You might pick up something like this. You might pick up some, some inner leg strength, some extra core strength, um, even if you don't use a lot of the stuff, and then something like that might happen, and bang, you've got a nice escape. Um, so hopefully that's how people, so easy. Yeah, so, so easy to do. Let's see some of the comments we got here. Hurst, Ninja Squid said he got judified. Lucio Silva lost one of my shoes, cell phones and wallet on the ground in the process. Lucio Silva was saying about how he got attacked. But better than staying on another guy in the street. Yeah, definitely. And obviously if you guys are watching this later on, then it'll be a video of a repeating story with repeating demonstrations. But that's because obviously people are joining in as it plays. So forgive me for that. Um, so yeah, today was my, uh, today was my la uh, training, my live training, uh, um, and then I put this on after the training. But what was I doing today? I was doing similar stuff to that, grappling with the grapple bag on the floor, practicing basics um, on the ground, um, on the ground, practicing just gripping the bag, practicing twisting with the bag in the legs um, to, to keep the leg strength up. Yeah. Because you can restrict people's air and all sorts of shit, even if you're not a BJJ master. Um, so yeah, in gripping like this, and just practicing, twisting, twisting. Yeah, this is just an exercise. Yeah, or gripping like this, and practice twisting for your core. Yeah, change legs around. Yeah, doing all sorts of those sorts of things, gripping like this. And just practicing keeping the bag gripped with the different maneuvers. Yeah. Trying to, and then actually a good one for you guys, which I found out is quite nice, is sit-ups. But oh that'll get you there. Oh sit-ups, but you grip the bag as you do them. Yeah, and I've just got a, I've just got a calf stitch, so I'm gonna have to stand up, flex it out. There we go. That went away quick. There we go. See, that's why you have to work on these things. So yeah, pull ups, sit ups, but you're gripping the bag with the back of your legs as you do them. Yeah, and and you saw there. That's why I picked up a calf stitch. So, but you're doing a bit of that, a bit of pinning, a bit of wrestling. But thanks for the thumbs up, thanks for the likes, thanks for the subs. Um, obviously this isn't a BJJ or wrestling specific channel, but all aspects of martial arts I enjoy. And if you can't basically wrestle a bit with someone, you're missing out big time, yeah? So definitely go to your MMA class, go to your whatever. But try those sit-ups, because those are awesome. Because um, there's not a lot you can do to get the back of the legs here. And of course, if you're wrestling or BJJ or whatever, you're always trying to grip stuff with your legs. Not like this, obviously, because this is an exercise. But it's a really good move. 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 Yeah, and just move up and down. Move up and down the bag. 
and pulling with the legs, yeah? Um, so, yeah. Then another wrestling exercise for you. Like I said, I'm not Mr. Wrestle, so you'll find loads of other better channels. But I'm just going through what we're doing today. Another cool wrestle exercise for you guys. Obviously laying your bag down, putting the old gi, and then <sighs> weight on the top. Yeah, keep that weight on. Now <sighs> sprawling the back. <sighs> yeah, it doesn't have to be the best in the world, just your cardio, and for like real life, if you keep the knees in on the torso, you know, when you're moving, you stop them from escaping, yeah? But, but that's, but the exercise is just keeping that torso pinned. So torso pinned, you know, this will hold someone down. You need that wide base, yeah, pinned. Pinned, wide base, see your legs are up far. Pinned. Yep. And obviously, if you've got a little rig like this, you can even practice your your run, your fucking arm bars and stuff. Yeah. Practice your arm bars. Yeah. But I don't have a grapple dummy to do that properly. But if you are doing arm bars, just remember weight goes down on this leg on the head. Pull them in, tighten the knees, weight goes down, and push, yeah? And that's why that sit-up that we were doing comes in handy. Because you're just training that little silly back muscle there that, that you use for that same thing, yeah? You come over the top, you're pulling someone in, and it's a silly little muscle, but that's what my channel's about. Not so much uh, being the expert of every martial art, but little training exercises that'll help your martial art and my martial art. So hopefully if you're a BJJ guy, way better than me, you'll go, oh yeah, actually, you know, I've trained for this many years, and what that guy was doing there was a bit shit, but that little exercise of doing those sit-ups with this gripping, with the legs on the bag, that's going to come in handy. All right, yeah. Now, great cardio too. So we'll drill that escape one more time for anyone who hasn't seen it. So again, real life situation happened to me. Tackling someone out there, fell down in the middle of the road. Person falls on top, yeah? Person falls on top. Okay, shit, this is bad. All right, grip round body, big circular motion, well not super big, with elbows in to capture the arms. So I went, I went, oh shit, capture the arms, pull them in. And we were stuck like this and I squeezed, and I squeezed with my legs to start cutting the oxygen out, yeah? The moment I squeezed, I was like, haha, this guy's big, but he's untrained, yeah? Opposite hand, opposite leg. Simple, you fall to the side where there's nothing. And they, um, in wrestling or jiu-jitsu, when someone puts their hand out, they call it posting to stop you from moving. But of course, I had both of his hands. So he can't post. But had he posted with a single arm, I can still take it away, gouge his eyes, do whatever. But anyway, opposite hand, opposite leg, push. And up. Yeah, opposite hand, opposite leg on the bone here. Yeah, you can still rake the face or whatever, and up, but it didn't need to, yeah? The moment the guy landed like this, this is where your martial art has to come in. It was simple control, weight on, obviously arms are dangerous, so pin down from the elbows and shoulders, yeah? Pin down, weight on there, and this is when the body weapon comes in, because it's like, oh shit, what can I do? I'm in a stalemate situation, and I suppose he might be able to do the same to me. But this is where body weapon comes in. Two, one, two, two short headbutts to the face, 
uh, Kung Fu train my head. So, but you know, even if your head's not trained, that's gonna hurt someone. Two short head butts. Yeah, pin. Can't see. Shoulders. Two short head butts. Pin shoulder. Elbow. And then that was it. It was game over for that guy. So. And don't worry about the belt, I'm wearing that for Kung Fu reasons. Doesn't matter what belt anyone wears. Keep my kidneys warm. So I'll put it on again. Alrighty. Cool. So, there we have it. And now let's go to some other trainings. Dum dum dum. Let's see if we've got some comments going on. Oh, no. Ninja Squid says, never mind. Excellent. All right. Thanks for the likes and subs, everyone. So, what else was I doing today other than the grip dummy and training that weak area of mine? Okay. Nice little one here. This is a traditional Kung Fu one here. So another thing for uh, BJJ or wrestling or traditional martial arts is your grip and your ability to be able to grip um, is, is very important. Yeah, so this is a modification of a traditional uh, gripping tool which is usually about this big, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, this is my modification one, yeah? And then what, what I train well, you, you can train it in a, a BJJ wrestling way or a Kung Fu way, in horse dance or whatever, but because today was wrestling theme, yeah, I'm, I'm lying down, yeah, I'm just keeping the leg guard here, yep, and I'm gripping this bamboo, yep. <laughs> now this might seem silly, and you're doing a sit up. I'm sitting up again. Line straight. Yep. You're sitting straight. And if you can imagine, if you're a B, if you're a BJJ or wrestler or whatever, um, the amount of times that you're wrestling someone or whatever you're doing. Yep. And there's grips, grips, clothes, for all chokes. Yep. Gripping clothes, gripping, gripping wrists. Um, I beat someone once by just gripping their wrists in a, in a roll that we were doing. Very much more experienced submission grappler than me. He had like five to seven years experience, but I mounted him and I just gripped his wrists, yeah? And all I'm concerned about is learning, yes, but real life and ultimately trying to win. Um, so grip the wrists and then in real life, boom, boom, them, them headbutts would have sent him to sleep town. Uh, someone says, got a great grip exercise from a guy called John Brookfield. Oh, well, uh, do share my good man. And we can all enjoy it, join in it. Yeah. So another way, again, from the traditional Kung Fu, you lose this, try not to damage my mats, is you roll, yeah. You roll the grip. Feel the bamboo snapping, cracking, yeah. And you roll, and the rolling, the rolling toughens the fingers. If you do BJJ, if you do wrestling, you're tired of getting your fingers hurt and like bandaged and shit. You know this helps. So it's you imagine, um, you imagine like you're crushing, yeah, like you're crushing. It's from the seventy-two secret arts of the Shaolin. You imagine like you're. Crushing like something in between your hands and you roll. Let's see, we got some comments here from people. 
Luciano Silva says, nice tool. One thing I tried during the current series was to fix the belt somewhere and pull to climb from lying or standing position. Yep, belt, belt pull-ups um, are an awesome staple. Um, I like cross grip belt pull-ups. So great for the forearm strength. So you, you cross, cross grip on the, you put chuck a belt over the tree, your martial arts belt. You do cross grip on them like this. And then you do pull-ups on the cross grip on the belt. Yeah, pull-ups, pull-ups, pull-ups. Uh, and, and then you change over. And I used to do those uh, at the beginning when I was doing the BJJ lessons. I always used to go and do my cross grip pull-ups at the beginning. People would be looking at me real strange. So we'll do a few more of these. Grip, grip, grip. Rolling, rolling grip. Another cool thing you can do is just work your elastic power. That's a cool tool for people. Uh, you can also train your bones on it. Yeah. So, but that's another, that's a kung fu thing. The inside and outside bones. Yep. Yeah, you train your bones, so. But that's another thing that I do. Uh, looks like we lost a thumbs up for training the bones. That's a shame. Uh, David says, using a long carpet or rug. Place the weights on the roll and roll the rug towards you. That's a bloody good idea. Rolling up a beach towel is another. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah. So, so there we go. So there we go, my friends. Um, all right. Uh, I've got a sledgehammer exercise there as well, but um, you guys have probably seen their sledgehammer exercise hundreds of times. Um, so twists with the sledgehammer and rocking with the sledgehammer. I might do some of those after. Oh, we got our thumbs up back. We lost the thumbs up for training the bones, but uh, yeah, a lot of some people don't like training the bones. But uh, it was, as part of kung fu and striking arts, um, you know, you have to train your bones because um, yeah, you, know, you strike with them or whatever. David says, love the hammer work. Yeah, so th this is this exercise here for anyone interested. This is called Twin Locks. Uh, it's from the 72 Secret Arts of the Shaolin, um, which is 72 Shaolin training methods, which I've been sort of investigating and training for sort of like 15 years or something. I wish I was better at them. But um, yeah, all you do is you knock the two bones together of your arm, and initially they're very weak. Um, but then they become uh, strong from mutual knocks. Yeah, and you just do it gently for a lot of time and the bones become strong uh, and it helps uh, with everything, with the grip and whatever. But it goes with the other stuff that I mentioned on my bio. It goes with the iron palm training. It goes with all those things um, uh, to, to, to help to make your, your grip, your bones, your tendons and everything stronger. Yeah, so not just smacking, like a lot of um, iron palm and bone training is like one of my, I try and specialize in that and I've always enjoyed that. Um, but there's a lot of people who show it with the, just the smacking. Yeah, and that's not strictly correct. Um, um, yeah, someone's here says, uh, Dave says, I sparred guys whose wrists felt like iron, really dense, heavy pain. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. Like the. If you can train the wrist, that was that used to be the true power of karate. Um, you know, like you, you see a lot of these blocks in karate. Um, well, I believe anyway in the true traditional training. 
you know, they, they weren't blocks like this. It's parries with strikes to limbs and stuff. That's how I use them um, when I did use them. Yeah, so there's none of this sort of thing going on. Um, but that's a whole nother topic. Um, but yeah, that was the true power of karate, was the training of the, the, the wrist. Uh, and if you know, if you're from the Kung Fu side of things, white crane and all that, the origins um, are, uh, you know, the crane has its wing like this, which is trained a lot. Um, oh, it looks slightly like snake what I was doing there, but the crane has its wing. Yeah, the wing, or the, the wing of the crane. But this bone was the true power. Yeah, there's the diverting, but this bone was the true power, yeah? And then white crane is taken over by uh, karate and, um, and yeah, and they used to train the properly with the bone training, like they do in Uchi Ryu and Goju Ryu, and then it got watered down, but it's a whole other topic, but it got watered down with Gishin Funakoshi and Shotokan and the standardization of karate, etc, etc. Um, oh, another, another thing I wanted to do a separate video on, but for people who are watching now, for, for real life, when you're in a grapple situation. Now, speaking of Uchi Ryu, there's the Boshiken, yeah? Now, this is going into the realm of traditional arts, but this thumb strike here, um, again, like the wrist, is initially very weak, but you'll see this kind of a strike in traditional karate, yeah? And you're like, oh, then when could I use it? Yeah, what can I use it for? Obviously, lots of striking or whatever. But one, you have to train it. So I usually just train mine by uh, doing push-ups. Um, I just do push-ups on it. So I form the form, and I just do push-ups with the thumb away. I don't know if you guys can see, I don't let me tell the camera. But I do it on a hard floor, so I don't bother this floor. But I'll show you, and then I'll show you the point of the grappling. So I point the, the, the thumb, I grip the floor. This, this, this goes with our um, grip strength training that we were doing, the follow along. And then you do the push-ups, or you just hold, or you move around. Yeah, yeah. And then you've also got this. Yeah, and you can do the same. Yeah, you can just hold there to hold the form strong. Um, now you might be thinking, okay, well, what's, what's the point, yeah? But I wanna show you guys this. This is how traditional arts can bleed into your modern stuff. So now, you see in the UFC and you see whatever you see in the grapple fighting arts is like, you know, people, people have trouble hurting people on the ground. So if I look here, so someone's on top of you here, again, grip. However you've gripped them, you've hold them in like the theme of our, win of our video. Kidneys exposed. Yeah, kidneys exposed. Yeah. Now that's a fist on that area. Yeah. And that's the traditional Boshiken strike. Now that will absolutely wreck your kidneys. And you, there's, cause it's basically like me getting a stick and just jabbing it into your kidneys. So that's what I mean, short. So this is for a more real situation. You couldn't use it in like UFC or whatever, but more real situation, you, you're in this situation, you're, or you're on top and that traditional strike into someone's kidneys that is gonna make them piss blood and that is gonna potentially be a, a, a lethal thing eventually, yeah, a bad thing for them. That's something you can use, but again, with the traditional art, you have to train it. The same thing with the leopard fist. Everyone's like, oh, you know, you can't, what can you use that for? Exactly the same thing here. The kidneys are exposed, you're in a losing position. You want a few distraction strikes. Kidneys. Wrecker, wrecker for the kidneys, yeah? Okay, so again, we'll use our thing from today to get the person off us, which is opposite hand, opposite knee, push them down, and off they go. But it works. So that was a tangent, but I just wanted to show you guys there um, how some traditional strikes, um, but they have to be trained and conditioned I want to show you there how some traditional strikes can be employed. Um, yeah, 
Nakadaka can, someone saying Nakadaka can would work nicely in the ribs. Um, Nakadaka can. See, I do know my martial arts. Nakadaka can is this, popularized by Gishin Funakoshi. Who knows? Um, who knows if he actually used it in the ribs? Yeah. But but there we go. There's two traditional strikes. But that's not the theme of this video. But there was with two traditional strikes, uh, the Boshiken from Uechi Ryu, and um, well, we I call this the Shikanken. But in Kung Fu, there's lots of other names for it. That was a Japanese term I used, but. In Kung Fu, they can call it Leopard Fist. Sometimes they call it Ginger Fist. Um, there's variations of it, but that's it basically. Yeah, boom, Leopard. Into the into the kidneys of the person. Da, da. Yeah, so, but again, because you're making the uh, surface area smaller, you don't have to apply as much force, but you need conditioning, yeah? So, but my channel is all about conditioning. There's sand methods. There's bag methods, there's pressing methods, and you actually have to do all the methods. Well, you have to try them all because they all, well, thanks for the thumbs up, because all the different methods help to condition the different parts of the body. Um, so anyway, I like doing my videos. I like going on tangents during my videos. That was a tangent, but it's relevant how those, um, those traditional strikes can work in these sorts of grapple situations, but, but obviously sport, sport grappling not gonna work. Um, because you're not allowed to do these. But also, it's not going to be like, they're not going to be killer moves, but this goes to the realm of Kyusho and pr not pressure point fighting, but it's, it's, um, it's vulnerable area fighting, yeah? So if you had someone there, if you were doing this, if you gave them four or five proper Boshikans into the, into the kidney area, um, it, would, it would do a lot of damage, but your Boshikan has to be trained, yeah? Um, but that then that adds up to the specific martial artist. Do I want to waste time doing that training for that silly thing? You know, I can just punch the person. I could actually just slap flat palm slap them in the same area and cause a lot of damage. Um, uh, you know, just like you don't think it, but if you're if you're in that grapple situation here and you just flat palm slap the area of someone's kidneys, um, that also causes a lot of damage. Yeah. Now you add on to that conditioning training so that your hand's a little bit tougher than a normal person's hand and it'll deliver more hydrostatic shock. Um, great stuff. Triple B. What are your top submissions in grappling, says Triple B. Let's have a look at, well, I don't pretend to be any kind of grappling hero, I'm afraid. Um, let's see what Triple B's saying. What's up, homie? What are you showing everyone? But you're gonna posture up and rain bombs on your face. I can imagine the pain. Ah, Triple B, yes. Ah, oh, well, Triple B, this was, this was our video that we were doing today, if you're still here. So, um, this was a real situation that happened to me. Um, oh, that, that before, I was just demonstrating how you could use um, some traditional strikes. But the, 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 the mainstay of the video was, but, and this is exactly what Triple B was saying. If you're down like this, someone's gonna posture up and bust you in the face. So this is what happened to me. Person fell on top of me. Person fell on top of me. We're in the middle of the road. Terrible situation to be in. They said they were gonna start smashing me up. Simple stuff. Grip with knees, grip around body. Circular movement, I pulled them in. And I captured both arms. This is the simple life-saving escape, by the way. Captured both arms, pulled them in, squeeze with the legs, squeeze with the arms, distract them a bit with that. Opposite arm to opposite leg, and push them over. Yeah? And then I had them pushed over, pinned the arms from the shoulder down, body weapon time, two headbutts, yeah? Two headbutts stunning them at short range, because if you do big ones, they'll dodge out the way and you knock yourself out on the floor, don't do that. Two short headbutts, one, two, and then I came up, me still on the person, elbow, and that was, that was game over. Yeah, for them, they were stunned, they were nearly knocked out, um, but they, they told me afterwards, they were like, yeah, I nearly got knocked out, and that was it, I couldn't fight anymore. So, hopefully, ah, hello, hello from Turkey, thanks for the thumbs up, guys. Hopefully for Triple B, um, that was showing that's the escape, and exactly what he was saying, you can't afford a second's wasted time because the person can posture up. You have to pull them down towards you and in. You then can't keep them there. 
Yeah, because there's a real situation where on the floor, for me, cars were coming by. I was in the middle of the freaking road. So opposite hand, opposite leg, swizzle them over. Really easy to do for anyone who's joined in. Yep. Big capture arms. Important to capture arms. So do what you can to capture arms. Opposite hand, opposite leg, push the person over. Opposite hand, opposite leg, push the person over. Yeah, it's so simple. I'm no BJJ master. I'm no BJJ person. Such a simple escape. Yeah, a little bit of training. Yeah, simple jujitsu. Yeah, control weight on the person, squeeze with the legs. That's why you need the strong, develop that strong with the squeezing. Yeah, I'm gonna move that metal clip. Weight on the shoulders, squeezing good base. One, two, short headbutt, elbow. Yeah, out. That's what I use. Yeah, how, how to train head? Um, well, head easy. I train head. <laughs> oh, that sounds wrong. I train the iron head training, simple. Uh, just this style of thing. Yep. So you can do that on here. You can do that on the mats. The mats is better if you start off. Yeah, and you can see. Well, yeah, uh, it's not too much problem for me, even though I uh, don't have to train it every day now even. But the pressure on the skull is safe, yeah? Uh, it's not striking, it's safe, it's pressure, it densens the bone, and then it brings you into the mindset of body weapon, yeah? So if someone's pinned, whatever, body weapon, yeah? Head goes, yeah? Excellent stuff. Um, and then, so for Triple B or whoever's listening, we were showing that escape, and what I was showing within that escape is that for your real life situation or for your whatever or for your training, is that how you can employ traditional strikes such as the Boshiken, but it needs to be trained, so the Boshiken is this knuckle, yeah, into vital areas like the kidneys. Yeah? And you can get a more devastating effect than the punch, yeah? The Boshi Ken. Or the Shinkan Ken, or, or Ginger Fist, or Leopard Fist. Into vital areas of the kidney, yeah? That's gonna seriously uh, damage the opponent or at least pound for pound, like you see in the UFC matches, they're grappling and they, you, they do these distraction strikes. And when you're watching it, you think, well, oh, it doesn't, doesn't look like it's doing anything. But afterwards and during, it, it, it does. So I'm saying for your real life, your real training, you know, that if you're in that situation and you throw a couple of those Boshikens in there, it's gonna, it's gonna damage that opponent more uh, per capita. Yeah, or whatever you want to do. Yeah, but you have to train it. It's no point. Um, I I just work them into my grip training. Um, and if you're not interested, that's absolutely fine. Doesn't matter. It's just it's it's a stupid traditional martial arts thing. But I work them into my grip training where I train them on a hard surface, and I'll just I'll just hold the hold the form here yeah, like so with the knuckles, and then I might do push-ups. Just hold the form, pushing the thumb into the ground, and then the same with the with the uh, ginger fist. Yeah, yeah, just whatever. Train it how you want. But if you don't train it and you're not interested, that's absolutely fine. All right. Okay, let's see. We got some comments here before before we leave. Uh, Luciano says. He says he has a third friend who broke their hands for not knowing how to punch properly. They aimed for the forehead and broke the bone in the root of the pinky finger. Oh yeah, boxes fracture. David, you've seen, you've seen many people mess up their hands. Um, that's why boxers use tape on their hands. But aiming a punch at the forehead is stupid. Yup. Yup. That's all correct. Yup. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, I've spent, I've spent 15 odd or so more years trying to condition my hands as best as I can um, using, um, as you guys see on the bio of my video, iron palm training methods, conditioning training methods. But, you know, still, you know, if you hit something wrong or whatever, you can hurt yourself. Um, you know, I've, I've practiced punching straight. I practice punching this way. Um, practice, obviously, with the iron palm training system, you use a lot of reverse strikes, um, but they're not a real strike. You, you, those are for training to toughen up the bones, yeah, you know, because these are the bones. That's why, like, like people were saying, you wrap your hands because these bones are what give out ting, 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 a lot of the time when you punch. So that's why you guys might see like in iron palm training systems, people doing this sort of a strike with the back of the hand. Yeah, so that's not a real strike. Um, it's, it's just, um, it's just um, for conditioning. And then you see the Chinese guys, there's a load of videos recently of them like breaking bricks and stuff, boom, with the back of the palm strike. Um, and that's just for demonstrative purposes, basically, because a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, those, that iron palm crap, it's not real, it doesn't work. But if you transpose it forward, um, you know, someone who can break a brick, or even if it's a, a tr well, not a physical trick, but even if it's on an edge and there's a bit of slamming, but someone who can routinely break a hard object with this back part of the hand, because um, of the density of the bone is going to be, or well, in my experience, my opinion, is going to be less um, susceptible to boxes, fractures and fractures of these bones. Um, I mean, from my limited experience with the training, um, it seems to have been that way. Um, you know, that, that, or at least that's the theory behind that particular training mechanism. Yeah, so now you know. Uh, what have we got? Some comments here. Uh, David Hughes says you have been at this for a long time. I remember uh, you when you were UK based content is great. Oh, well, thanks, David. And, and thanks for you guys who've been here for so many years. Yeah, I think it's like 10 years of 10 years of IBMA, the channel on YouTube, um, still a very small channel. So it's like 10 years of the channel on YouTube. But obviously prior to I mean, I started the channel when I think I was in my mid 20s. Um, uh, early to mid 20s and then you've got the 10 years before that because I started training properly when I was 15 with the conditioning um, uh, yeah so you've got the 15 you've got the 10 odd years leading up to the creation of this channel then you've got the 10 more years so so or the 15 more years so it's something crazy like 19 20 years um, I, I just wish I had video from you know the very early times when I was 18 and what not but um my brother did take some small videos but um yeah he unfortunately passed away um and the camera uh, got lost in sort of the sands of time you know but it, it doesn't matter um but one, one other thing to show you guys here uh with regards to the iron palm and stuff is this little beauty oh now that we've finished our little training, this is a... Oh, Dave says, sorry to hear that. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Yeah, you lost lost a couple of people along the way. Lost my dad as well. But, um, hey, um, everyone's got the stories. So this is a good old... This is a bag full of iron sand. So this is iron filings and iron sand. So this is the same... This is what I was saying about before. That's a, that's a very old, traditional uh, Kung Fu training method from 72 Secret Arts of the Shaolin, where you strike into the iron sand. Yeah. And you obviously, you have it on something better than this. Um, but yeah, that's something that obviously you guys know that I do. Uh, train the body, train the bones. Um, probably, probably better. You wouldn't do it. On the floor, yeah, yeah. You just train all that. You just drop your hands in, yeah, in the fist. And that's how you see those guys. There's loads of them now on the internet uh, with the big fat hands, you know, and they're smashing everything. Um, they're demonstrating a very high uh, level of that iron palm, iron fist skill, like severely high. But but um, 
obviously the big sacrifice is what the damage has done to their hand, you know, but, but um, it is in the same realm of that. Um, I prefer a slightly different method where you um, train, because um, a lot of them only train uh, one arm, they'll train one hand, very traditional, um, and yeah, like, if you did get hit with that hand, it would be a very bad thing. It's like getting hit with a sledgehammer or something, you know. Um, but it doesn't make them the winner killer, like they're going to kill everyone in the world. Um, but yeah, if you fought them, you'd have to be deadly scared of that freaking hand. <laughs> um, you know, so I, I prefer a bit of a, you know, I'd love to be at that level where they are, but, but I prefer a bit of a more holistic approach to my conditioning training, which is including the, the muscle the tendons and there's 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 a few there's a few ways to train those iron uh, palm skills iron hand skills um, as as a, uh, and that that particular way that you know where the go the guys have the really big fat like deformed hand is considered a very hard external method of training iron palm iron fist um, but there are other methods. Um, you know, there's more, uh, I suppose, there's more slightly internal methods where you, and by internal, I mean where you'd be training the strength of the grip, yeah, in lots of ways. You'd be training the fingers with red sand palm, like I've got on the videos before, where you're gripping into the sand and you're stri not so much striking, the striking doesn't do that much, but you're gripping into the sand and pushing and thrusting um, to, to make the tendons and the bones of the fingers strong. Um, and then you've got other methods like this with the, with the pulling and the pushing and the rolling. Yeah, where you're crushing things. And it's all stuff to try and make the fists, uh, the fingers uh, strong. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got silly things like this, which is just a bamboo roll beater. That's good for uh, the bones. The shins, use that for my Thai training or whatever, whatever training you want to do. Great for a bit of body conditioning too, if you're into that sort of thing. But um, yeah, there we go. Um, what have we got before I head off? Probably got work to do. Luciano says there's a difference in training method and fighting technique. Uh, few people realize this. Yes, yes. Dave says, Dave says he's a bent finger, which is just, will not straighten. Fingers are fragile if not trained. Inventor says, I encourage, thank you from Spain. From my point of view, you do innovations. Ah, oh, hola. Hola from me here. I used to live in Spain, but I've forgotten my Spain. I forgot my Spanish, so I apologize. Um, I think the only thing I know how to do now in Spanish is like order a table. Like, what is it? Una mesa para... Uno, dos, or tres, por favor. <laughs> it's like a rock right table. Oh man, the stuff that you forget. Uh, um, yeah. So there we go, guys. Hopefully today's little live training session. I trained, I trained before, and then I put this on after. But hopefully today, it's like we're gonna, we're gonna think. You guys know, but we're gonna think. Yeah. Um, train those inside of the legs. Maybe horse stance training isn't that useless. You know, because it trains, horse stance training isn't that useless because it trains these muscles inside of the legs here. Yeah, the leg training, and then that translates to uh, grappling, uh, you know, with the, with the squeezing, with the, with the squeezing on the top, squeezing, um, you know, to keep this, that leg strength in there. For wrestling, it means sprawling, you know, so you've got a nice sprawl. Um, a lot, just quickly, a lot of people used to say to me, oh, well, you know, what's the point of the big stances? There's no point training them. But, but remember that a lot of traditional Kung Fu is actually wrestling, but it's kind of dissolved away into a lot of the forms and movements, or well, other than being uh, involved in um, weapons use, is uh, wrestling, yeah? So, but it's cool, you know, because many times, if I've got my little, my little fighting friend here, many times, you know, I might have some opponent who's trying to pull me down, you know, with the with the legs, you know, on you or trying to wrap you, and I'll just I'll be like here in split flip position. You know, this is like sport rolling I'm talking about, but I'll be here in split position in a split stance and just just like you know, they'll be trying to pull me down and I'll just be squatting into a really low stance. 
they'll be trying to pull, pull, pull. And whereas a normal person, well, not normal person, but untrained person in the stance, you know, they're used to toppling you over. You know, whether they're whatever belt they are, purple or brown or whoever they are that you've been rolling in, you know, they, or they're used to pushing your feet out from under you. You know, if you've got a wide, strong base, you can cause them problems. Uh, you know, and you can just literally, you can literally hold them up. So that's another exercise for you to practice. Like, well, first you practice your your stances, but then once you practice your stances, once you get them strong, uh, you can get them strong, and then you can practice uh, holding holding your bag, holding the bag as if as if someone's trying to pull you over. Yeah. And this bag is like a 30 something kilo bag or whatever. If someone's trying to pull you over and you're just, you're just resting on your wide stance, yeah, and they can't, they can't pull you over, yeah? Well, they can, but it's a bit harder. So that's, that's one benefit I found of That's one benefit I found of the stance training, wide stance training. Uh, so, and that was cool, because I went to BJJ, having done Kung Fu and whatever, and stance training, and I found that it was an immediate benefit. You know, people, I mean, you guys probably know more than me about it, but people go to the ground, they do all the kind of ground sweeps and they're monkeying your feet. And I'm not saying they don't, they don't work, because they do, um, and they got me a lot of times, but I found that this was helping. So for all so many years, people watch the channel or whatever, they're like, oh, why are you standing there like an idiot in stances and this and that? You know, it's not useful for real fighting and this and that and the cage. And, and then you go and do no gi MMA and you go and do um, BJJ and people are sprawling the same. Wide base, wide stance sprawls, yeah, except they don't have the flexibility to, or they don't have the same leg strength because they haven't trained those things for like 10, 15 years. So yeah, I found when just rolling with normal jujitsu people and just normal folk, that it was like, yeah, man, this like, so they'll go to the ground and try all this and pull you over with their weight and you just stand in your stance. And, and, but obviously you need to, you need to counter, uh, you need to counter the bones in the right position. You know, you can't just stay in the same position. So you have to be fluid within your stances. But I, I honestly, I found that was a big help, the wide stance training. Um, and it helped for that. Yeah, it helped for takedown defense. So yeah, so there's, there's another thing from the old traditional Kung Fu training, train the stances. It's good for your body, it's good for your back. It's good for your like energy flow. Um, I've got a lot of videos on transferring. Uh, David says some of the elements of martial arts can 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 attract a closed-minded cult. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But I'd agree with you as well. So the the whole iron palm scene as well is is um is also can be a bit of a cult, you know, because um, you know there are people um, there are people out there who do like iron palm training, um, who, so look, this is the, like, I know we're tangenting off onto iron palm. This is my view of iron palm, okay? Iron palm is poor per the person. So why do I train iron palm? To make my hands stronger than they would have been. All right, that's it. That's all I can do. If I didn't do it, so, I mean, my hands aren't that tough, but, you know, these are my hands, these are them, you know? They're not invincible. They break the same as everyone else's, you know, but, you know, they're, they're stronger than they would have been, you know? They're stronger than they would have been. And that's why, that's why it is. Uh, in the past, there were lots of people, uh, more so in the old days, people did a lot with their hands. Uh, they were a lot more trade orientated. You only have to watch you know the, the you know those an, the ancient channels. You know the ancient channel where the guy like makes a little stone axe, 
and then he freaking grinds something and he chops. You see the mechanical work that we used to all have to do. You know, in those days, you don't need iron palm because freaking everyone's hands are so tough. Uh, or today, if you're a bricklayer or a tradie or something like that, and you work with your hands all day, you're a plumber, you know, you, you, don't, you don't necessarily need the uh, training. But, but if you're like me, who's like a police officer, and you do like weights and martial arts, so say you take me, if I'm just a police officer, do a lot of desk work and you can do as much or as little as you want, or your average office person or this and that and the next thing, um, you, you, you won't have tough hands like those people. Then if you go against one of those people, they will have physically more strength and they will be more tougher than you, naturally. So that's the point of Iron Palm. Um, there's a guy on here, uh, you probably won't see this, but there's a guy on here, Red Chucks. Um, he doesn't have that big a channel, but he does lots of breaks uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, he does breaks. Red Chucks, hello to Red Chucks. Um, he does lots of breaks and cinder breaks and stuff like that. He's a big, that guy is a big guy. He's a big, strong guy, and he's a trade guy. You know, he works with his hands. He's like a builder. Uh, and you can, you can see naturally from the lifetime of building how strong and how tough that guy's hands are. Now, like, if, if someone like me had to face that guy and I, and I didn't do any kind of iron palm or strength or conditioning training, I could be really good at my martial arts, but I'm at a, I'm at a disadvantage. Do you know what I mean? I'm at a disadvantage anyway. Um, so, so that's, that's what the whole iron palm thing is about. It's just about conditioning yourself. If, if you're, if you're a tradie and you're a bricklayer, plumber, whatever, um, you, you'll have naturally strong, tough hands anyway. You probably won't need to worry. You hit someone, boom, they stay hit, you know, scaffolder, whatever. But if you're another normal person, an office worker, there, there's a saying in China that, um, the martial arts is for the rich people. Like the martial arts is the like the endeavor of the rich person. The poor people work, <laughs> you know. And that that but that goes to say, you know, like the poor people they're just working their freaking whole life, you know, tr slaving away doing their remedial task. It doesn't mean they're not strong, you know. And then the rich people, the rich people in the society actually were the ones who had to go. Oh shit, you know, I better start training because I, I'm I'm not working and I'm getting weak. And everyone could just come and take my shit off me. So, so yeah, so I think there's a bit of a, a misunderstanding with the iron palm. So where I was going with that as I went off on a tangent is um, there's, a, there's a lot of people in the iron palm community and training who, who like, they're out of shape. You know, well, it, do, it doesn't matter because it is whatever it wants to be for you. But, you know, they're out of shape. They're, they're you know, they, they couldn't run a little bit up the road. Um, you know, and, and you've got to give some people an allowance for being older because as we get older, we do get out of shape. But then you've got people like Sifu Yang Li who's older and he's a freaking ripped Shaolin monster. So, so do you get what I mean? There's a lot of people out of shape, out of whatever. They're stuck in the whole iron palm cult. So they don't have cardio. They don't have like some requisite strength and conditioning training. They've let themselves go and they still just hit the bags and they, they pretend like they're the freaking God's gift to martial arts and, and, you know, MMA and everything. And none of that matters because they'll iron palm you to death. Um, but yeah, that's, that's not how it works. Um, they're, you know, like, uh, like, um, like what, what so who, who was saying, was it like Dave was saying, you got to avoid those cult mentality in martial arts and it's everywhere. There's BJJ cult mentality where, you know, BJJ is the greatest thing, you know, but like we've just demonstrated with today, yeah, it can help, but the floor is a dangerous place. And what happened to me is number one example where I did fell on the floor, I did use BJJ, but we were on the floor in the middle of a road. Well, actually, I used Jiu Jitsu, just Jiu Jitsu, um, but it's the same. BJJ is Nawaza, ground fighting of Jiu Jitsu. Um, but now it's branched off into its own thing. But, but yeah, now how good of an example is that of a place where you don't, you shouldn't use BJJ, whereas you're running across a road and you fall into the road with someone, cars passing you like this, boom, boom, like in some stupid film, you know, that's crazy. Um, but that's what happened, <laughs> you know, but, but to the same essence, BJJ, the thing that you shouldn't use in those circumstances is the thing that helped.
in those circumstances. So we'll go to a few comments and then I'm probably gonna have to go. Uh, Black Eagle, Claw Online Kung Fu, Kung Fu Stances, Wrestling Stances. Yep, yep, ah, oh, yep, Kung Fu. Bald Eagle, Claw, exactly. That's pretty much what I just, what I said just before, but thanks for mentioning it again, is I was like, the mainstay of old, old Kung Fu is, was wrestling, is wrestling. And it's now, and all, and, and all weapons, which is why you had to move in the certain way that you had to move. Uh, and now it's, it got misinterpreted and lost and it's like weird punches that no one would ever do. Um, Dave says he uses a hammer for 10 hours a day and his hands are stronger now. Yeah. Do you know there is a huge health benefit to having strong hands? Yeah. Dave, grip strength is awesome. Um, Inventor says he op opens the doors and windows, new air is healthy while going to the gym. Yeah. I've, um, after last time I did a training in here, I didn't feel that great. So I've now got... The back, I've got the door, well, the door's a little bit closed now, but I've got the back window open out there and fresh air's coming in. So thanks for that, man. Got that fresh air because last time I didn't feel that great. Dave says, the more you cut, you, the more you cut your hands, the stronger the immune system. Oh, okay, I, I, you have to explain that, Dave. I heard from a friend who's practicing Kung Fu under Ling Wing Kuei that in Chinese history, there was a time when having strong body was a sign of being poor. Yeah, well, there we go. There we go. Scientists measured the blood of people who did these stances and their testosterone rose by 25%. Yeah, well, it's interesting, Dave. It's, it's something about training the legs. It's just tough on the body. Um, so, yeah. I wonder what time it is now. I don't even know. Oh, my neck. Oh, well. I've only got work at 8 o'clock. All right, guys. Well, look, um, thanks for tuning into the channel. Um, I liked, we did a little bit of uh, some topics and then we, then we went into some other crap, which is cool because it's kind of like if we were all training together and um, we were all worlds apart. Um, um, but if we were training together, um, we would, um, you know, you would, you would do your training with everyone and then you'd sit down afterwards and go through some other shit. Um, thanks to the Patreon people who support the Patreon, like and subscribe. Um, thank you to the um, people who are on the Iron Body Martial Arts um, Iron Hand course on Udemy. Um, there's quite a few people on that that have trained that. Um, and yeah, again, if anyone's training that and comes on here, just send me a message if you want any extra info, extra training stuff. Um, Dave, Dave, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Luciano Silva, thank you because you were going to go to bed. Inventor, thank you. Um, Bald Eagle Kung Fu, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you here. Inventor, yeah, we said that. I think that was it. And there were some other people who tuned in earlier on. Um, Triple B, he was here for a moment. Um, but, but yeah, all right, guys. So, yeah, enjoy your guys' training. Uh, thanks for supporting the channel. Share it to your friends or whatever. It's a strange channel. Um, it's an old channel, but not very, not, not very high views, but it's getting there now. Um, it's, it's, it's getting there. If you guys got any ideas for videos or whatever that we can do, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit crunched for time at the moment, but just send them through, um, chuck them or like, just chuck them on any of my random videos, put a, put a comment on there and I'll usually read it. And, um, yeah, that's it. So have a good one guys. Um, I'll leave, I'll leave it for a few seconds just in case anyone's got any more. Oh, my back. That was a decent calf freaking cramp that I got there. But then I have been training since, since 3.50 in the morning. I went to bed early, I woke up at 3.50. Um, and now I think it's about 6, 6 o'clock. Well, it's probably coming up seven. So you can allow me to get a little leg cramp in, um, in a couple of hours of training. Yeah, so, so. Um, I'll tell you what, some videos we're gonna have, um, some more Qigong videos, um, some more stance training videos, go through that. Qigong and stances is great with the breathing. Um, my, takes on, my take on the Qigong, uh, which is like, functional, uh, it's all to do with the tendons and the movement and the alignment. Um, 